Bitcoin has rejected from the $28,000 horizontal resistance, printing another doji candle. This candle of doom represents a significant shift from buying to selling and could potentially be an indication of a downtrend to come. In today's video, we're going to be discussing this and so much more. Let's get into it. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. We're here to discuss Bitcoin and there is so much to be talking about today, guys. We'll be talking about the short-term price action, potential lower targets, overall trends, the macro charts, of course, our candlesticks on the higher timeframes, and a variety of different technical indicators. We'll also talk about the broader markets, traditional markets, and of course, market data as we do every video. If you like the content, consider subscribing, click the like button, and obviously drop a comment if you have any questions. I do read every single comment. You can also find us on Telegram if you want additional content. Join our link, second link down below, access to charts, updates, videos, analysis, information, news events, educational posts, and really guys, there really is so much stuff in here. I highly recommend taking the five seconds to do it. You will not regret it. Now, if you are interested in supporting the channel, supporting me, supporting the content, the best way you can do it is sign up to BitGate. It's an exchange I trade on. You'll get a 15% discount on all your trading fees, plus a whole variety of different exclusive benefits. You can do so by clicking the link here or the first link down below. If you're interested in joining the VIP channel, we do have a sale starting on the 30th. So if you are interested, you can contact me for more information. Again, read this message over here. You can find all of our VIP information here. You'll get access to two channels. Our main channel where we post exact trades of exact entries, targets, stop losses, etc., etc. Like you can see over here, for example, this GMT trade, entries, targets, stop losses, um, and so much more, guys, in here. You'll also get access to our group chats where we have a general chat. We have a trading chat with heaps of different charts and analysis, and of course, a help chat and altcoin videos posted in here. So go ahead and contact me for more information. Again, a sale will be starting in about 24 hours let's go ahead and get into the video guys market data how are we looking for the month guys we have what two days three days left we're 16.69 percent in the green obviously we've had a phenomenal move in march a much better move than most expected a huge huge rally all the way upwards to that next huge resistance which is the yearly resistance between 28 to 30,000 as you can see we have actually printed a doji candle at that 28k resistance followed by a nice strong red body signifying a shift in strength a significant shift in momentum and of course a potential reversal toward the downside incoming but we'll talk about that more in the short term in today's video what we saw was a break above the 20 to uh, 25.2k resistance which is this 280 day resistance line we broke towards upside our next move was all the way upwards to 28 to 30k where we broke right through that low volume range. Remember our videos from like a month ago, we we're discussing this resistance range for a long time. We said, if we break over 25.2, we're gonna see a quick and strong move through this low volume gap on the VRPV up to our major yearly resistance, being that yearly trigger at 30,000. And of course, that entry zone into resistance at 28. We have seen that rejection on the weekly at 28K. This is definitely not a good sign for the bulls and it signifies a fair amount of bearish strength building up after what we have seen of weeks now or at least days of decreasing momentum. Looking at the data again, guys, volume is up about 52%. Again, as the week opens and we get these large moves and strong moves to the downside or upside, and it's volatility, volume enters, liquidations rise 200 211% in the positive for liquidations. 30 day period volatility on the rise at 3.56, 60 day volatility on the the players plateauing is so plateauing pretty steadily 3.17 again 60 day does take a little bit longer to account for and if we do look at that 15 minute liquidations we can see a whole heap of liquidations came from longs in fact within a 15 minute candle we saw 45 million dollars worth of longs liquidated and we have seen a steady flow of longs being liquidated a couple short liquidations on high lev throughout the last 12 hours so a very brutal uh, day for longs people were over leveraged in long positions people were expecting you know this 30k resistance to break and the price to just absolutely moon these people taking longs of resistance i've been warning you guys for weeks resistance is resistance until it is not do not take longs at resistance 
Position yourself to be more favored towards shorts. If you have spot positions, hedge your spots, but be prepared for a breakdown. If you look at our VIP channel, for example, just our last couple trades, we have been preparing for, look at all these shorts that have been printing. We have been preparing for these shorts during this period of indecision as we expected that breakdown. But anyway, guys, let's talk about the DXY. The DXY, as we can see, the DXY is actually going down still. We did see that rejection from this major, major resistance zone. And we did say yesterday, we could potentially see the DXY come all the way back down to around 102, right? We could see the DXY come all the way back down here. And we do expect that is definitely a possible uh, result for the DXY here. And what we've said yesterday, I'm gonna say it again today, is it doesn't really matter if we do come down what matters is this downward trend line, right? This is our downtrend, this is our current downtrend. And we do expect this downtrend to break. The real important zone for the XY to clear is this current resistance we face at around 103.5. If we come down and retest this support, there's a lower chance that we'll come up and break this resistance once we break out of this downtrend. However, if we create a local low here, we've got a higher chance of pushing through and breaking this resistance sending the DXY into our overall uptrend. We do see the DXY is in a descending channel formation and therefore we do know at some point a break is going to come with this downtrend and the flip is going to occur and we're going to see an uptrend develop. But the real question is, will the uptrend push past that major chunk of resistance that will facilitate a continuation back to 105 or will it just act as a local top and another rejection point? Again, the sooner we break that downtrending resistance, the easier it's going to be to break through this horizontal resistance. Again, for now, we are doing nothing more than ranging, so expect this downtrend to continue. Moving on, S&P 500. Dow Jones still looking half decent, right? We saw Bitcoin crash. Again, it was massively overextended. It was massively overvalued compared to everything else. It hit major resistance and massive rejection is expected when the price reaches major resistance. Nothing too out of the news. But we're looking at the DXY and the Dow Jones. These asset prices didn't really climb too much. These indexes didn't really go up too much. They've been more or less holding their basis of supports. And we do see a overall uptrend here for the, D uh, for the Dow Jones. And we expect this uptrend to continue and the price to continue to rise unless this uptrend breaks. If it does break, we can see a retracement back down towards some of these lows, sitting around 3,000, uh, 30,500. Until then, we're not really too interested and we're still, until we start clearing out some of these local highs and again, some of these local highs over here. Moving on to the S&P 500, exactly the same thing here, guys. Nothing really too interesting until we start clearing out some of these highs. Otherwise, if we do continue downwards, we are looking for support along this downtrending support line. Again, like I said, nothing too interesting right now. We do need to break above 4,100 to see any sort of strength occur on the chart and any sort of momentum flow in and the price to see any sort of continuation upwards. Until then, expect a slow drawn out move, potentially more downside as this descent, is rising channel is suggesting a potential correction downwards. Let's get into Bitcoin guys, let's talk about the charts and we'll start off on the higher timeframes discussing this chart over here. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees and exclusive access to our Mega Well promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that guys, BitGet is a non-KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing up to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. And what we are seeing here is of course a candle of doom. I call it a candle of doom because it generally signifies a significant shift in the strength of a trend. But in fact, what it actually is called is a doji candle. And a doji candle is characterized many different ways. There's many different types of doji candles. But the one we're looking at over here is a traditional doji candle as we are seeing close to equal length wicks on each side of a very, very small body. Body meaning the open and close price of the month of the week is almost identical. As we can see, we have a very, very small shift in price. If we look at the price over here, it's no more than about $20 change from week open to week close. What this suggests, particularly after a strong move upwards, it suggests 
a massive shift in the strength of the trend. Imagine we have a very strong move up and then all of a sudden we plateau. What does that suggest? Well, if we draw on a chart, for example, if we draw a chart here and we have, oh, I've drawn it the wrong way around, delete this top part over here. We have a significant shift of price action upwards and then all of a sudden it plateaus. The average would be something like that, right? It will start curving. So we overall have a shift in momentum toward the downside. It signifies a drop in strength, a drop in momentum. And again, those two things, momentum and strength. Strength being, again, what we talked about yesterday, strength being momentum as one key component, okay? Liquidity, volume being others, okay? Momentum being speed, velocity of price action, okay? If we start to see momentum fall, we generally can assume that our volume and our liquidity is also dropping and therefore the strength of the trend is dropping and thus that this, this candle here represents a shift in the trend, whether or not it's occurred yet or whether or not it will occur. And what we're seeing now is that shift in trend play out. And we have seen that, right? We have seen a strong rejection. And regardless of what you wanna say, this is a significant rejection, right? We saw a move up to a very strong resistance range, okay? And now we have seen a doji print and that doji has taken us down around 5%. From the top of a doji, we're looking at about 8%. So it is quite a significant resistance and quite a significant rejection. We're talking about the total amount of dollars actually displaced from the market from this move is quite considerable. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to nuke to zero. This doesn't mean we're going to new lows. This doesn't mean we're even gonna drop past 25.2K. In fact, I think in these times, it's very important to understand that the overall trend is still up. We are still technically, guys, if we go back to this chart, in that bullish zone. I'm gonna take a few moments just to find the chart because it is really a really important chart. So hang with me for one second when we go through the charts over here. And a lot of people, when we start going from aggressive uptrends to then starting going into downtrends again, they go from I'm overly bullish at resistance and then I'm overly bearish when we get rejection. So it's important to zoom out. So looking at this chart over here, guys, we can see the zones. This zone over here is technically still the bullish zone. So we are technically still bullish. We are above the 280 day major, major support. This is a 280 day major support line. As long as the price remains above this level, we are technically bullish on the higher time frames. We are technically bullish on that weekly, on that higher time frame, on the daily charts. However, the short term can be bearish and we can expect a short term retracement downwards to lower targets while still remaining bullish on the higher time frames. So remember, it is quicker for short term price action to flip from bullish to bearish than it is for higher time frame price action to flip from bullish to bearish. It takes extended amount of indicators, it takes higher time frames and it takes more confluence across higher time frames for the higher time frames to flip the trend direction. We get validation and confirmation on the short term first, and if that confirmation validation extends, it eventually translates to higher time frames. So you can be bearish on the short term and still be bullish on the higher time frames. And that is what I want people in today's video to really, really understand. So let's talk about our levels really quickly. At what point does this downtrend become bearish? Okay, so neutral territory, bearish territory, bullish territory, bull run territory, okay? My drawings are terrible, I hope you can, I don't even know, what was this? What did I say, it's a bullish? That's a horrible B, okay, that's a better B. Neutral, bearish, bullish, bull run, okay? That is the zones we're looking at. We are technically in the bullish territory, however, we just got rejected from the bullish trigger, okay? The bull run trigger or the bullish trigger over here, the yearly resistance range. This resistance is now a support, and this is now a support. These are support levels, okay? If we lose this support, we are technically now entering a higher time frame downtrend, okay? We have been rejected, we have lost two supports, we're entering a higher time frame downtrend, we are losing that higher time frame strength we have developed throughout this period here. Now, we do not expect new lows to come in unless this major support is lost. If the 18,000, 20,000 support level is lost, we then expect new lows. How low could we realistically go? Well, let's look at the charts, guys. The charts tell us everything we need. We don't need to look anything else. The charts tell us absolutely everything. So let's zoom out. How low could we actually go, guys? And I think the better chart would be this one to use as it has more data. Uh, let's go ahead and show you guys. And we'll go to a weekly chart just to make it a little bit easier. 
Okay, when we're looking at high time frames resistances, since we don't always know where they are and supports, we have to use our VRPV. It represents periods or horizontal ranges that attribute higher amounts of orders and lower amounts of orders. Higher orders equals strong support or resistance, lower orders equals low liquidity and obviously easy, easier access to price to move through. So if we do lose that 18,000 support, we can expect a drop back towards the massive, massive basis forcing around 12,000 to 14,000. That is going to be the absolute lowest we could go if we lose 18,000. 12,000, 14,000, you can see a huge gap in the VRPV right over here. This represents two important zones of confluence. An important zone of confluence, number one, a break of a major, major neckline resistance, which have sent us parabolic, okay? And in zone of confluence, number two, that same neckline of resistance on the downside. So a lower and upper range of resistance within this horizontal resistance range, okay? 14 to 12,000. If we break through, okay, if we break through 18,000, that is where we'll be ending up. Now, you're probably thinking, yes, that's quite extreme. But yes, guys, it is extreme. We would have to drop from here another 34%. So there's no point thinking about that yet. This is so far away. Keep it in the back of the mind and think about what you can do now. Take actions now to profit. Back of the mind stuff. Don't be sitting here saying, oh, we're going to 12,000. Oh, we're going to 10,000. Guys, we have so much support below us before we even consider that stuff but keep it in the back of your mind. The same thing goes with the 30,000 guys. So if we break about 30,000, where are we going next? So if we look at the historical chart, 30,000 is a major, major, major resistance. Looking at the prior yearly lows of cycles, the prior yearly lows of cycles, every time we break about 30K on the monthly chart, we actually end up, sorry, over here, in a macro uptrend. This macro uptrend eventually develops into a bull market, okay? Now, the bull market generally starts after around 16 to 17 bars, which means we don't expect the bull market to start until April, uh, March, April 2024, around this, this green line. However, a monthly candle close above the yearly uh, bull market low, which in this instance is 30,000, will be a great entry for higher time frames if you have not already entered. Now, we did enter, we bought Bitcoin at 16,500, 18,000, and 19,200, and we are not selling those positions as we still believe the overall uptrend is still intact. If we look at this chart over here, I'm going to show you on the higher time frames. Let's go ahead and just get out of this one over here. Uh, Command Z it a bit. One second, guys. Okay, let's go to the double chart. Here it is. Okay, on the higher time frames, and we bring up some of our moving averages, such as uh, the 200 moving average. And I'm going to go ahead and chuck this one in. Uh, the 200 moving average, let's adjust this one. 200. Okay, 200 moving averages in. We can see that price is above the 200 moving average, which is a really good sign. If we adjust it to the 50 moving average, okay, 50 EMA, we can see on the 50 EMA on the on the seven day chart, we're above the 50 EMA on the weekly. If we adjust that to the 300, we are very much above the 300 on the weekly. So we are starting to see a lot of confidence suggesting that the trend is shifted towards the upside. However, this uptrend has not broken through the key trigger level to enter this macro yearly uptrend, okay? So we are in an uptrend. The uptrend just hasn't broken through the yearly trigger to send us into a higher time frame uptrend. And that is the trigger and it's the most important resistance on the chart. This is a trigger that could result in Bitcoin crashing much lower if it does not break above. So let's talk about the short term, guys. What we had on the short term was a horizontal structure. Now, it's a very messy horizontal structure. I said yesterday, delete this, delete this, delete this. There's our horizontal. Every single one of these three points are news events. We had FOMC, uh, pre-FOMC run-up. We had FOMC announcement, okay, massive rallies. And of course, this is the American government basically saying Bitcoin mining's energy efficient, even after saying for five years straight, Bitcoin mining's the worst thing for the energy production ever. And now they've changed the tune. What a joke. Anyway. Horizontal channel, we have had our zones talked about for quite some time now. In fact, we've been talking about this for a while. If you've been following this channel, you would know that we've been talking about this for a while. Anyway, bullish above here, bearish below here, bearish support, resistance, triggers, etc., etc. We saw a breakdown. We are in that bearish territory. We have lost this range, and that has sent us downwards. For us to see any sort of continuation upwards, any sort of retest of 28, 30,000, any sort of push into this higher resistance range again. I moved it around. It's higher resistance range again. The price is needing to get over. We have to get over 28,200. These ranges are still the same. Look at these ranges. Neutral in here, bearish below, bullish above. As long as we remain below this, we are in a downtrend. We are in an aggressive 
downtrend that will continue. Where are we expecting the price to go to? 626,400. Look at these local highs, okay? The, the charts tell you everything you need, guys. There is nothing left after speculation. You don't need to guess things. The data is all there. You just have to learn how to read it. It's like learning a language. Learn how to read what the charts are telling you. It is so straightforward when you get the hang of it. Looking at this point here, 26,400. Looking at higher points over here. Little bumps in the VRPV can be great points of resistance and support, okay? So we're looking at these little gaps after these downtrends over here, after these increases, looking at these heels, little increases, okay? And then we see if we lose that level over here, we drop, we into this little gap in the VRPV, a low volume range where the price will increase volatility and volume back into major support. So 26,400, 25,770, and 25,200 to 24,200, guys. Really simple stuff. Those are our lower targets right now. Short-term rejection on that massive base of support looks like we are continuing downwards. Keep it simple. Keep it stupid. Do not overcomplicate it. Do not confuse yourself. Do not watch a million, billion different indicators. Keep it simple, guys. Indicators are phenomenally shit at predicting reversals. They are really good at developing narrative, okay? Apply narrative to structure and you have your analysis, okay? So, Currently, is there a possibility for us to break upwards? Yes, there is a possibility for us to break upwards. Could the price break upwards? Absolutely, it can push upwards. Is it concerning? No, everything that we've been talking about for the last few weeks remains intact unless we enter this bullish territory. That is when we have a shift of that bearish momentum to positive momentum. That is when all the indicators have been suggesting a pullback and a rejection at 28K turn bullish. Until then, everything remains the same. Higher time frames. Let's take a really quick squeeze, okay? RSI, and then we're gonna end up the video. RSI. What are we actually seeing, guys, on that daily? What are we seeing on the two-day? What are we seeing on the three-day? These are indicators that we have to be looking at because, like I've been saying, as a momentum analyst, I trade, I'm a momentum trader. I, I scalp trade primarily based on momentum indicators. Momentum is by far and large the best indicator to use. In my opinion, I believe it is entirely the best. My entire trading career I've been using the RSI. Um, MACD, just a little bit of course, Marcus OB, is momentum indicators of volume ranges and horizontal structures. They tell you leading data. They tell you where the price could potentially go and what the price is going to potentially do. Not so much where it's going to go, we have to use horizontal ranges for that and volume ranges, but they tell you what the price is going to do or how the narrative is shaping up or how the price could potentially react at these resistances. What we have been seeing is decreasing momentum, okay? Decreasing momentum, rising price equals bearish divergence. We have seen a breakdown. It is not a surprise. This is not rocket science. This is not surprising. Anyone who got caught off guard from this, anyone who was expecting the price to rocket through 30,000 was not thinking objectively. They were caught up in emotions. They were not looking at the charts or what they are, guys. Look at the data. Trust the data. The data is not always going to be right. But every bit of analysis I have done, every little bit of video I've done for you guys over the last two years, okay we have flipped from bullish to bearish at the perfect times we were bullish under here guys we were bullish over here everyone was calling for 10,000 3,000 we'll say no the bottom is in we're in a falling wedge structure decreasing volume decreasing velocity decreasing volatility decreasing liquidity this is a bullish reversal we saw a break at 19,200 we said the first target was 28k we said a break over 25k we're looking for 28 to 30,000 at these points, we were saying decreasing momentum, we're going to see a rejection. We saw a rejection once again, rejection, rejection. It is simple, follow the charts. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there before I go on too much of a rampage. For the short term, expect a little bit of volatility to dry up. Expect a little bit of consolidation to occur. Expect a little bit of sideways price action to occur. Don't expect any crazy moves toward the downside anymore unless we start losing to some of these lows, okay? Lose a low, we continue down. Until then, we are now in a little consolidation phase between this range over here. Expect that consolidation phase to continue. Of course, horizontal channel formation will eventually break toward the downside unless we are able to get above this massive support and find support here in which we could potentially retest these mid-levels. Again, everything remains the same unless this bullish trigger is broken. And if it is broken, guys, it wouldn't matter because we have made significant profits already on our shorts. We've already executed our trades. We've already profited from this downtrend. We've already made the money. We've already got our spot positions on BTC. There is no possible scenario where we do not profit here. There is no possible scenario where we do not come out winners because we've been prepared for this for months we have been prepared for this before anyone was even talking about it anyway guys 
that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Join the Crypto Academy if you want to learn how to trade. We have a 10 unit course over here. We teach you everything I use for trading. Of course, I developed this course with my good friend, uh, Wolves of Crypto, and we spent about a few months putting together and compiling data and placing it all into this 10 unit course to teach you everything that is fundamentally essential for learning how to do technical analysis. If you're brand new to trading, if you're brand new to TA, this is the course for you. If you've been doing it for a couple of years and you don't really know what you're doing, this is the course for you. If you've been an experienced trader for a while, this is not the course for you, okay? Now, if you are interested in joining VIP, again, we do have that sale starting, so go ahead and contact me via the Telegram channel. Make sure you are in the correct Telegram channel. There are plenty of scams out there. Only the links in this video are the correct links. Every other link you find is a scam. There are plenty of imposters. Do not be fooled, okay? We've had people sign up to scam VIPs, send money to the wrong people. Make sure you click the links in this video only. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow.